Well, thank you everybody for being here, and happy birthday, Kerry, for <laughs> three years celebration. Uh, I will try to talk today a little bit about the media landscape in Vietnam, uh, what is happening in terms of, uh, of media, and what is happening uh, uh, according to investment, what brands are doing in terms of, of investment. So, First of all, is changes all over the world. Uh, all of us as consumers have experienced changes uh, all the time. So if some of you recall your first motorbike or your first phone, it's totally different from what you have nowadays. But, but what is happening now, uh, ch the change is happening faster because there's a lot of new technology that is changing the world and everything is changing faster and this change is happening worldwide. So, um, the first point of view, is, the first point I will touch is what is happening to Vietnamese consumers in terms of interaction with media. Uh, and a lot of questions we usually receive is what is happening especially with TV. So TV is still the king in Vietnam because no other media can reach 95% of the population. But if you see the number in the left, is very important, uh, sorry, and you're right, is very important, but wh what happened in the last two years from 2014 to 2016, people spend 20% less time watching television. So it has two messages, this chart. One is in terms of reach, television is still the king, but, but to deliver your message, it will be every day more complicated because probably this trend will continue, okay? So, so uh, this is a little bit about television. Who is winning? If we see the digital part, what happened in the digital world? Well, uh, the consumers in Vietnam spend around 90 more minutes uh, from 2014 to 2016. So, so it's a good opportunity for all of the brands out there to understand like, okay, uh, it's getting more complicated to reach the consumers on television. Let's look at some other options. And well, what? Oh, sorry, sorry, I forgot to. I go back on this slide. Uh, besides television, uh, losing audience, uh, radio, traditional newspapers, and magazines are also losing audience. So going back to this slide, is people are being more connected. They are being online, and one of the reasons this exposure to digital is growing a lot is because mobile. Mobile right now, people are spending around. Uh, 90 minutes on the mobile, so it's a great opportunity for brands to begin looking over there. So, so the question over here is, we, we look a little bit of what is happening with the consumers is, okay, consumers are switching in terms of behavior, but what do you guys think is happening with the brand investment? Is it moving in the same way or not? So the answer is not. Uh, in Vietnam, what is happening is still 90% of the media allocation goes to television. That, that, that it sounds a little bit strange, no? Because if we see that uh, the time people are spending on the TV has declined and other media uh, like, like digital is growing so much, why the allocation has not changed? So probably some of you are asking by yourselves, oh, but probably this is the same in other countries. Uh, or what could be the reason? So let's look at what is happening worldwide. If we look at this trend, it's a trend of what is happening worldwide. If you see the investment on television is around 50% compared to the other media. So, Television is still growing because it will be very difficult to see a media plan without television because I think in most of the countries uh, they recognize the importance of having TV. But you can see how other sources like digital, what we call interaction in this case, uh, outdoor, uh, cinema, uh, radio and TV keep growing in terms of investment. So, so the idea here is, okay, uh, we know consumers are changing but why brands are not moving. So, so the first part, uh, I just want to, to question if we have brand managers over here, probably it's time to think a little bit different, no? Because if consumers are moving and we don't start moving according to their media exposure, uh, probably we will stop having that conversation with them. So 
I would like to ask a question. This is just an example. Uh, let's talk, if you were Pepsi. Uh, when you post on Facebook, who you think Pepsi is competing with? Anybody would like to answer? Any other? And the second question will be, when we think about investing online, what do you guys think? Probably a lot of you will say like, oh, I will consider Facebook or YouTube as the main channels. So the, the first point is when we go to the digital world, it's not so easy. Okay, it's growing, people are being exposed to all this media, but when you post something on Facebook as a brand, here is what happened one day in the digital world. So, so you compete against five billion posts on Facebook. Okay, so you compete about the post of your friends, the post of other brands, and the same happened by tweets, but everything. So you have to be very careful when you go to digital, you have to be very smart every time you post, and you really need to catch the audience, because if you know digital, all the models right now, if you post something, and they don't get a lot of likes or a lot of interaction, next time they will be exposed to less and less and less people. And with all these competitors out there, it's really complicated. You really need to think what you're putting online. And this picture in the bottom, what it tries to reflect is all the social networks have a different personality. They don't work the same. So you cannot post the same on Twitter, on YouTube, on uh, Facebook, because people are looking for different things. So, so uh, when you are talking with your uh, media agency or whoever is making your uh, digital strategy, be careful what they are doing so, so, so you are accurate that, that they are doing correctly. And I think this chart is very, very interesting because a lot of people, we were saying, when I think about going to social networks, Probably you will think of Facebook and YouTube, but I would like to explain a little bit about this chart. It's not that you have, what this chart tried to show, uh, to show is uh, on the top, you will see the, the media or the social networks with less interaction and in the bottom with more interaction. So, so you as a brand need to understand this because if your brand need to have a lot of interaction and a lot of talking about your brand, probably you consider to invest more money in the virtual communities, okay? Because what happened on Facebook, what happened on Twitter, you can reach a lot of people, yes, but, but the, the level of communication or the level of interaction is not very high. So, so I think this chart, and well, Kerry will be happy to share the decks with you guys uh, later on, but it explains a lot uh, when you're thinking about digital, think about this chart. I think it, it helps a lot to understand the digital strategy. And um, also a lot of people say, okay, here I see a lot of digital platforms. So me as a brand, where should I focus? No? And I think it's very important for you as a brand to understand your consumers. What do they want? and what will make money for you, okay? So in the next slide, uh, we will see a very good example of, uh, of a brand in the US, how they identify the business opportunity with a tool of all the social environment and, and the great success it has. It, it won a lot of awards in 2015 or 2016, so to launch Taco Bell's new mobile ordering app, we had to be louder and more disruptive than anyone else. With 1.6 million apps already in the App Store, we knew we had to go uber big on all Taco Bell's social channels. Or we could shut them all down. and launched their new app by making it the only place fans could engage with Taco Bell. A full-scale blackout across all Taco Bell's social media channels, each tailored to that specific channel. We shrunk Taco Bell's YouTube channel to a single blacked-out video, 
We launched a Snapchat story with 24 hours of blacked out messages. For Facebook and Instagram, we manually hid thousands of posts to create the blackout experience. And we developed a custom hack with Twitter that made us the first brand to intentionally lose all their followers overnight, only to regain them when the blackout ended a week later, all working to make the message clear. The new way to Taco Bell was only in the app. According to the news reports, you blacked out on uh, Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, and so forth. How long is your blackout going to be? What's the thinking behind it? Aren't those big advertisers for this? By blacking out all our social media areas, the people that are our biggest fans will now be the first to know that we have the app. No, Taco Bell hasn't been hacked or given up on social media. So you have to know your audience. I mean, it, it really was a genius marketing plan. We said nothing, and everyone started talking. We left Twitter and trended on Twitter. And with over 300,000 installs in just the first two days, we outranked the most popular apps in America, including these guys, and proved that to earn the biggest spotlight, sometimes you have to go dark. So, so I think is, this is a very good example. Probably Taco Bell was doing a lot of efforts in different social media, but in terms of revenue, probably it was not converting into money, no? So, so when they make this strategy and they understand like, okay, we need to send people to the application because it's a way to order, they make the traffic there. You can see great success in the download application, but also in terms of sales, the, the purchase increase. So, so this is a very good example, like when you think about digital, you have to be very clear where you have to go and what message you want, you want to deliver to your clients. So uh, just to conclude a little bit, I think um, I will uh, like to recall three, three main points. I think as a brand, if you have been doing things in the last years and you continue doing the same, probably you have a big chance of losing the communication with your customers. So you have to understand the trends and go according to the new trends. I think in terms of media planners, uh, media planners probably 10 years ago was very easy. You have eight channels. You just put the advertising on the TV and everybody can see you. Now it's a big challenge, no? Uh, it's not that easy. So, so now I think the media planners have to become a lot of them good researchers. Uh, and understand and explain you why they decide to invest over there. And well, uh, just talking about television, I think uh, if some of you talk with the broadcasters, this is already happening on Vietnam. Uh, broadcasters, they don't think anymore about TV. They are thinking of total video. And I think all the different media should be changing, uh, changing the way of thinking. Because if not, the trends we see at the beginning, if you go with the trends and you don't adapt, you will lose that communication with the customers. So, thank you. <laughs>